Ever hear the expression that nothing ever stays the same? Oh boy, isn't that true about nature? Hi everybody, this is Natchez James Anderson from the Marion County Park District. Hopefully you're doing well, keeping safe, keeping warm, enjoying this nice uh, springing day. Today we're going to be talking about ecological succession. So we're going to be defining that word and also too we're going to be talking about primary and secondary succession. We'll probably also talk about some of the different stages of succession, maybe not all of them, but we're definitely going to be talking about some of the different challenges that we have here in the state of Ohio when it comes to certain ecological stage habitats. So guys, I hope you enjoy the program might be asking yourself, what does ecological succession mean? So ecological succession is the process by which the structure of a biological community evolves over time. So ecologists have split succession into two different categories. There's primary succession and there's secondary succession. So primary succession is when you have a ecological community that has never existed there before. A great primary example of that is when you get a newly erupted volcano that formed a new island. And again, nothing has been there previously, so over time, a community will start to develop, birds will start to congregate, plants will start to grow, and next thing you know it, you'll have a little forested area over many many years so next we have a secondary succession and this means it takes place where there are, have been remnants of a previous community so we talked about before about primary succession so completely brand new like we talked about with volcano eruption creating new islands so secondary succession is again the when we have the one community and is disturbed rather naturally or by humans and then over time it is either restarted or starting to regrow into that new community. Um, so some of the natural ways the secondary succession happens is through forest fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, and through uh, humans, it would just be through uh, agriculture. Um, you got from clear cutting of forests, um, and then if we left that alone over time, that forest would able to rejuvenate and recreate a forest again. But like primary succession, it will take many, many years for that in order to happen. This land was once all natural, but then man came into the state of Ohio and converted this land into farmland or development. And over time, they decided that, hey, maybe this area is not good for farmland. Let's convert it back to the way it was. And so, over time, herbaceous vegetation comes into place and voila, you've got a early successional stage habitat. And then as time goes on, more thicker, more woody vegetation comes into place. And over time, this will become a small forested area which then can come into a larger forested area and then turn into what's called the climax stage. So the climax community or the climax stage is a stable group of plants and animals that is at the end result of the ecological succession. Now, please keep in mind that yes, you could say this is the last stage of the ecological succession stage, but as we mentioned before, things are always constantly changing. Um, like we mentioned, some of the natural disasters that can change a natural community. Of course, there's different plant animal diseases, there's invasive species, um, there's just a lot of things that can change a community. Um, and then unfortunately, like we've mentioned before too, a lot of human disturbances such as clear cutting, agricultural practices, um, so again, nothing always stays the same when it comes to nature. So next we're going to be talking about the successional stages that we have here in the state of Ohio. So we will be talking about the primary succession, secondary succession on how they are a little bit different when it comes to the different stages that they have. And also too, we'll be defining about pioneer species, intermediate species, and also too, we'll be talking about some of the successional stage challenges that we have here in the state of Ohio. 
As you're looking at this diagram, you're seeing that it looks pretty interesting. It's got all these different stages and throughout time, it changes. We go from left to right, as you see on the left side from annual plants. And as time progress on, you get your thicker herbaceous plants and then to your smally woody plants. And over time you got smaller trees, bigger trees, and then clear on the right, you have that hardwood tree, or like we talked about earlier about that climax community or climax stage. So during the ecological succession, there can be pioneer species and intermediate species. Pioneer species are the hardy species which are the first to colonize a barren or fresh environments. So rather it's through primary or secondary succession. Lichens are usually a great example of this. They usually grow on rocks or on the soil and they're usually the first ones to colonize. Our intermediate species is when succession in an ecosystem advances towards its climax community, or basically when species that have come in and establish, but then over time will be overtaken throughout another ecological stage community. And a great example of that is from your small trees, small shrubs, to larger hardwood trees, to even larger trees that will overtake. So now that we have kind of distinguished that, you know, primary succession starting out from basically from lichens and throughout many, many years into that hardwood mixed forest, our secondary succession, as you see in this diagram, there was once a well-established community and as we mentioned, natural or human disasters can come through and wipe out an entire community. And it could leave it completely barren um, or there may be some survivors of different plant and animal species that may be able to colonize there but it's probably going to take a little bit more time since you know a lot of the resources are uh, been destroyed by by those natural or human disasters but as you can see that again over time that the pioneer species will move in and then over time it will reestablish into those intermediate species and then into that climax community as it once was before. So this is kind of a great example of some early successional habitat stage. It's basically we got a little mixture of everything. If you kind of look in the background, there's some herbaceous vegetation. There's kind of that small shrubby width of vegetation. You got small trees, you got larger trees. So a lot, a lot of diversity when it comes to shelter um, and a lot of different species of wildlife like those uh, different uh, shelter layers. Um, some are really particular and very, very picky and some are kind of more generalistic and can kind of take advantage of everything. So great example of this, uh, what you, wildlife you would see, you could see cocktail rabbits. Uh, sometimes I've seen woodcocks in here. Um, kind of more out in the more open, kind of more wooded area, uh, especially around like Mohegan. I know like box turtles, they really can thrive um, in those areas. So again, we're kind of struggling with that in the state of Ohio. We have very mature, kind of more later stages of the successional uh, period, uh, like down at Hawking Hills. Uh, then we have more really uh, open, kind of fresh and new, I guess you can say in uh, Northwest Ohio, some more in your agriculture areas. It's, it's just, again, that kind of that middle ground. We just don't have a lot of, and we're, again, we're seeing a lot of our uh, wildlife species when it comes to early successional stages decline in the state of Ohio and in Marion County. And luckily, you know, we have park districts, we have uh, the, the ODNR, there's non-government organizations such as the Rough Grout Society, Woodcock Society. Um, these uh, organizations are buying pieces of land and converting them into that early successional stage habitat. And that's great. So we really uh, need organizations like that. And again, some park districts do uh, that as well. And, and the Ohio Division of Wildlife really likes to partner with those different non-government and government organizations. So I know throughout this video, we've been definitely talking a lot about forest habitat and how succession happens within a forest ecosystem, but succession does happen in a lot of different types of ecosystems, prairies and wetlands as well. So we're going to kind of talk about that. So I'm here at Marion Tallgrass Trail. This is our trailhead and what you're kind of looking back here, this is our prairie region. I know it kind of looks flat right now. Uh, but we actually do this for a reason. So if we want to keep 
this little prairie area. We have to maintain it because, as we've mentioned before, succession will kick in. So if once we put the plants in and they settle and we just left it alone, over time, more vegetation would grow and more and more. And next thing you know, you've got woody vegetation. And then once that woody vegetation really kicks in, it kind of defeats a lot of those wildflower species. And then next thing you know it, this little patch could become a small little foresty area. Now, again, obviously we do manage it here at Marion Tallgrass Trail, but uh, for prairies, if you want to have them around, again, you have to do some type of form of management. Rather, it's cutting down the old stuff, doing prescribed burns. Um, there are a lot of different ways to uh, manage prairie areas. Uh, but if you don't, again, it kind of grows into uh, a really wooded, really thick uh, little area. So some of the wildlife will thrive, but then, of course, the other wildlife won't. And that's the thing. You can't make all wildlife happy. Um, it's kind of like people. You know, some people like living in certain areas, and wildlife are the same way. Um, they just don't want to all live in the forest, all live out in the field. They all have their requirements. Some like a lot of rain, some don't, some like it more open, some don't. I could go on and on, but you get the idea that all wildlife have different types of requirements in order to thrive in their environments. So yes, even in a aquatic setting, succession can take place. Now, when I'm talking about an aquatic setting, we're, def we're definitely talking about a, a small pond, so not a, a huge lake or a large river. But as you see in this diagram that, yes, a nice thriving pond, it's probably been there for many, many years, but then as over time, erosion can take place, mudslides can take place, all kinds of sediment can deposit into this pond. And then just over time, that sediment just keeps piling and piling and piling up. And next thing you know it, that sediment level is basically right at the surface where the water once stood and then next thing you know, you got plants that are growing on top of that sediment and that pond basically disappears. So again, this can happen in an aquatic setting. Well guys, I hope you learned something new about ecological succession. Hopefully you learned the difference between primary and secondary. And I hope that you also learn some of the different stages of succession that we have here in the state of Ohio and some of the challenges that we face and that uh, not all wildlife like the same type of successional stages. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Marion County Park District. Make sure to subscribe, like, follow, share, all that good jazz. Make sure to check our other social media accounts, our Facebook and our Instagram account. Well guys, I hope you enjoy the program. Have fun, be safe, but most of all, go out and explore your Marion County Parks. I'm Natchez James Anderson, and I'll see you all next time on Natural Lessons with me, Natchez James Anderson. Goodbye, everybody.